Hello everyone, it's your host, Seth the Programmer, and today we're going to be doing my very own Akatsuki ranking list. This video sounds pretty standard and kind of stereotypical, but it seems like everyone has given their inputs on this topic except for me, so I thought I would finally make one myself. There's a lot of contentious topics on this list to go over, such as Kakazu versus Bane, and so on, but I think I have a lot of insight to give that'll be helpful for everyone. For this video, I'll be taking a similar approach as I did with the Saiyan ranking video, as I did before, where I put certain characters in classes and a range of numbers they could be at, as obviously there isn't always an objective way to put one group of characters above another all the time. This list will also include every Akatsuki member that was introduced from part one of Naruto onward of Obito's Akatsuki. This will not include hypothetical prime characters, so for instance, we'll be listing Pain instead of Nagato, Itachi from part one rather than Itachi in his hypothetical prime, and so forth. Also, as a rule, we are not including prep time. This is because obviously prep time implies it is not your normal combat ability. This is more of a power scaling video than a is it possible for this character to win kind of video. You guys will see as we go on. The Akatsuki are a group of high Jonin plus level shinobi, all with a task entrusted in them by Obito Uchiha to acquire all of the tailed beasts. That being said, it's no exaggeration to say that pretty much every Akatsuki member is an absolute monster that can outright take down Jinchuriki, so none of them are ever really implied or considered weak for the most part in the series, but there is definitely a strength hierarchy implied by feats and the actual characters themselves that can be looked into. So starting with Class D, I feel this is the one member of the Akatsuki most people believe is the weakest and for pretty obvious reasons, that being Hidan at number 10. Hidan, while even much stronger than someone like Asuma, Asuma being a character who was almost at the level of Kakashi in Part 1 in the data books, and had arguably the top close range combat skills of anybody at the time, also stayed in the data book. This same person, Hidan, is self-admittedly the least accurate and slowest member in terms of attack speed among the Akatsuki, Hidan even references Kakazu as the main guy who does all of the work of their duo, with even Kakashi recognizing that Kakazu was especially powerful among them. Hidan does have a feat of fighting against Yugi Toni, but you can just argue his immortality and Kakazu could have just had done most of the work for him, so he doesn't really have anything going for him other than being stronger than Asuma. Granted, as I said earlier, Asuma is powerful, but compared to the other characters in the show, it's usually safe to say Hidan is at the bottom in terms of scaling. In Class C, we have numbers 9 through 7, which, not in order, are Deidara, Sasori, and Conan. Conan, it's not Conan. Crush your enemies. So this and Class C will require a bit of context to fully explain my thoughts, so don't get your panties in a bunch quite yet, but Conan, for the most part, is actually pretty featless without prep time. In the creation of the Akatsuki video game movie, she is shown recruiting and defeating Sasori, but this video game scene is arguably not even canon, whereas game movies such as Storm Generations are confirmed to be worked on as anime canon, the creation of the Akatsuki cutscene in Revolution isn't, and it seems to somewhat contradict things in the actual story. Revolution had some Kishimoto involvement in it, such as creating and designing the perfect Susano of Itachi and Shisui, but there is, once again to my knowledge, nothing confirming the actual movie part is canon, the same way Generations is. Conan's only other scaling is just being pretty confirmed to be above Hidan and Hidan's own words, and with prep, forcing Obito to use Izanagi. However, in the Obito fight, we have confirmation that the only reason she did remotely good in that fight to begin with is because Obito initially underestimated her and forgot she was a strong Akatsuki member as well. So you could argue every time she even did good against Obito, it was when he wasn't going all out, so it's hard to scale her using that. We're also not using prep time for this video due to the nature of it, as obviously, as obviously prep time would allow a lot of characters to be higher than they should be. The other problem is that her only other real combat showing is against Jiraiya, in which Jiraiya and base is able to kind of tag her <laughs> with a questionable attack. Even against base Jiraiya, Pain thinks she would be pretty much zero health. Pain also told her that Naruto would mop her if she tried to fight him during the Pain arc as well as this, so it's not very practical to rate Conan as a top tier. In terms of Daedara and Sasori, this one is convoluted because obviously there's the whole argument of, well, Daedara said Sasori was stronger than him, and the typical counter, well, Daedara was only saying that to get Kakashi off his back and to make him focus on 
Sasori so he can capture Naruto, blah blah blah. We've all heard it before, so let's go over the stats instead. The stats to be considered are more so in the speed category, considering both combatants are pretty confidently able to damage each other. In terms of speed, we see characters like Deidara as an Edo Tensei able to keep up with Anoki in flight, Anoki being someone who is able to face Edo Suchikage Mu, and of course later Madara. He also does okay against Sasuke, however it seems in terms of actually fighting Sasuke was superior, and Deidara had quite a hacks and range arsenal that won't be as effective versus Sasori, which I'll explain soon. Sasori, in terms of speed, actually scales to Kaze Kage Gara and Rasa, if not being blatantly superior to them. This is due to the fact that Sasori has defeated and possesses the third Kaze Kage, who is noted as the strongest Kaze Kage of all time, even when Gara is alive. Rasa, as an Edo Tensei, is also able to keep up with Gara during the Warwick as well, and is mainly caught off guard while trying to defend the other Edo Kage from Gara's aerial barrage. Gara not only is fast enough to actually face Gengetsu, who is Mu's rival, and is fast enough to face Anoki as well, but also faces and defends himself from Madara, and actually directly catches and rips Deidara's arm off at the start of Shippuden. Many even theorize that Gara might have actually won that fight, or have done way more serious damage to Deidara if he didn't have to defend the Sand Village. So, the fact that Sasori scales above Gara, who already could rip Deidara's arm off, is not a good look in terms of speed. Sasori is also a very long-range combatant and has taken down nations with his puppet single-handedly. He has poison magnet projectiles that he can control the trajectory of mid-air that we know can shred through Daedra's clay, as this was shown when Orochimaru used an Edo Tensei to summon the third Kazekage once again, and was able to shoot Daedra's clay out of the air. Obviously, that Edo is also shown to be weaker than Sasori's puppet. Also, if he does ever hit Daedra, which the speed is implied for sure, he also also one-shots him upon contact due to his poison, but this is also while he's just suppressed. As we know, his true puppet form, himself, is even stronger, and can also control puppets to fly. Daedara's C4 Jutsu also would not work on Sasori as he doesn't even breathe, so the microscopic bombs wouldn't affect him in a similar way that they didn't affect any of the trees in the area either, if you want to take that as an example. Daedara's last resort is of course the C0 bomb, but as I said earlier, Sasori, if anything, is faster and would poison Daedara. Sasori's poison, for those that forget, also paralyzes and completely subdues the target, meaning the battle goes to Sasori at worst and a tie at absolute best for Daedara. Many people like to downplay Sasori due to the Sakura battle, however a few things to consider is that Sakura was specifically trained and even stated in the data books to be extremely agile, as Tsunade taught her evasion specifically so she wouldn't die on the battlefield as a medic. On top of this, Chiyo, who was fast enough to avoid a Rasen Shuriken from a KCM Shadow Clone as an Edo Tensei, was helping her through a lot of the battle, and on top of that, we then learned that Sasori is actually extremely emo and wasn't going all out genuinely trying to kill either of them with all of his effort the entire time and could have won if he actually wanted to. Due to this, I'd say Conan is a 9, Daedara an 8, and Sasori is 7. Of course, Conan is higher if you consider the game cinematic and prep time, with Daedara possibly being higher if you consider Kisame's statement of him being one of the stronger ones is valid. The only problem with this statement is that most people have not seen Sasori's true form. Even Kabuto and Orochimaru, who specifically spied on him, didn't know of it or his full power. We also never saw them comment on Sasori's death, so we have no idea what they thought of his level either. Plus, it seemed more like spitballing from Kisame, when we have statements that could possibly challenge this later from more solid sources, which I'll get into. Of course though, as I said before, Class C is up for debate, and I'll let you guys choose who you think would be ordered within it. In Class B, we have number 6 and 5, not in order, Kisame and Kakazu. I'm already getting dislikes for mentioning Kakazu above Class C already, but people either think he's trash or absolutely broken, but I'm gonna argue here that he's more in the middle. Kakazu could be lower and more in contention with Sasori if you consider a few factors, but I think there's a decent argument for him being C tier. Of course, by putting Kakazu here, I also have to explain why I don't think he'd be pain uh, level necessarily. as well, unironically, as many of you are aware. 
So this will somewhat segue into A tier conversations too. Kakuzu in the official Naruto volumes is stated verbatim to be one of the most deadly members of the Akatsuki. Considering Kakuzu is not particularly haxed and is more of a durable brawler type that has a lot of stamina, it is probably no exaggeration to say this is referring to power which even Hidan and Obito both respect. Hidan and Obito being rather stingy with their opinions of others, with Hidan blatantly saying that he wants to murder Pain when he gets the chance. Being one of the most deadly definitely implies he's in the top half of the Akatsuki rather than the lower half, considering he isn't hacked, hacks being things like such as poison or genjutsu, etc. And there is decent justification for it. Kakuzu faces off against Kakashi and is more or less his level, give or take. They are able to fight each other, block each other's jutsu and attacks, and can tank each other's attacks as well. Of course, Kakuzu does seem to have the upper hand against Kakashi, but Kakashi seems to imply that with the Mangekyo, he would near death Kakuzu. This is pretty insane considering this is a much more efficient Kakashi than the one that Daedara was already running from. Kakashi shortly after then faces off against Tendo and Asura Pain and is able to take attacks from them and even forces Tendo Pain to act with caution. The same Pain to rip Jiraiya apart with Tendo arguably being stronger than the ones that already ripped Sage Jiraiya's arm off. Defeating and even facing Kakuzu was enough for Obito to warn Pain of Naruto and his allies' abilities, showing that he is in a decent enough caliber to even fight back against Pain, which is displayed by Kakashi. However, this fear or warnings is not made in reference to Sasori, Daedra, or anybody else, only Kakuzu. Even with the knowledge that Naruto's allies, who Obito references, have faced these people before, they are not mentioned in Obito's warnings. This, alongside the volume statement, spells it out that Kakuzu is more than likely on a higher tier than the previous, and is considered quite impressive by the actual higher-ups in the Akatsuki. I'm definitely not saying this to please the Kakuzu fans, by the way. Swear. Anyway, for Kisame, Kisame is awkward because his power fluctuates pretty wildly depending on his competition, with him being able to become stronger the stronger his opponent is respectively. However, there seems to be limits to this that he admits to a few times. In part 1, he seems to believe his limits are Sani level, like Tsunade, Orochimaru, and Jiraiya. This may be consistent if you consider Tsunade a sort of pseudo-rival for the 4th Raikage who rivals Killer B in his completed tailed B state and all of the Sani are supposed to be somewhat rivals in strength, with Kisame only taking on Killer B's version 2 cloak after being heavily amped and stealing tons of chakra. With even then, he was almost getting one shot by the version 2 state of Killer B before fusing with Samehada, and even admitted base B could have put a hole in him with a lightning style enhanced pencil. That being said though, Kisame was trusted with hunting down Killer B and was able to fight off his base state before absorbing any chakra pretty well. The fact that Obito thinks Kisame could even fight Killer B long enough to absorb his chakra is a great feat within itself, considering Sasuke, who fought B recently, is someone who B thinks is the strongest he's ever fought before, even stronger than Joni Minato respectively, who B has fought many times before. Killer B in base is also able to fight against reanimated base Sharingan Itachi for a good amount of time, and could even hold off some of his jutsus, as well as help a fatigued KCM Naruto face off against Obito's reanimated Jinchuriki or the new Paths of Pain. Considering clones can drain the powers of the original as we see with Hashirama, it might be no exaggeration to say that KCM Naruto might have been nowhere near his his peak during these battles, but these Shadow Clones were still fighting off many Edo Tensei that everyone in the Alliance was blatantly struggling with, including Gara, Anoki, and so on. Due to this, and even base B scaling to a stronger original KCM Naruto rather than a Shadow Clone even if they are all fatigued, it's very likely Kisame would simply be in a higher caliber than the rest of Class C and D. Kisame is also able to force Might Guy to have used the 6th gate even with only a 30% power clone, and Might Guy has to use the 7th gate against him later when he steals some of B's chakra again. Between him and Kakuzu, I'd personally like to go Kisame, but for the Kakuzu fandom's sake, we'll run with the volume statement and say Kakuzu is stronger than base Kisame and is number 5, with Kisame maybe being able to overpower him with amps later. Don't smite me. 
In class A, we have numbers four through two, which are Itachi Uchiha, Pain, and Obito Uchiha, not in order once again. Itachi, we can all agree, has varying degrees of strength, but in the lore is generally considered above Sanin tier and is on a different level than most of the cast. He is able to point a finger at and annihilate Orochimaru, faces off against Kakashi with only a 30% clone, toys around with Sasuke stronger than the one who was already able to bully Deidara, then annihilate Orochimaru in the same fight to the point Z who thinks he's completely invincible while he's on the verge of having a heart attack and going blind. Obviously, people will then make contentions about the statement in part one of Jiraiya and facing off against Kisame and Itachi, where Itachi then lies to Kisame saying, oh, I, we might stalemate or we might kill each other even with your help. But obviously, this is more so based on Itachi not wanting to harm the Leaf Village. We already know that Jiraiya is more of an equal to Orochimaru, and Orochimaru thinks Itachi is blatantly superior to him. So obviously, Obviously, Itachi is not equal to Jiraiya. Kisame pretty blatantly always concedes Itachi would mop him in a fight as well, and has utmost respect for him. Even while extremely ill, he actually spars with Kisame in a Canon Generations mini movie scene. And while Kisame is able to get the upper hand, Kisame concedes the moment Itachi activates his Mangekyo Sharingan, even while nerfed beyond belief. Itachi, in his youth, was also considered a rival for Obito Uchiha when he first joined the Akatsuki in the novels, and even even with his sickness, Obito thought that Itachi could pretty much Batman him if he has ever learned his secret and could kill him if he wanted to. Many people downplay Itachi because of the Sasuke battle, but we know he wasn't even trying during this fight, so it's not really indicative of an anti feat If anything, he pretty much just toys around with the guy stronger than Deidara and Orochimaru and won. Orochimaru even post-fight with Hiruzen thinks he can fight off Sasori after researching a lot into him, and even though he doesn't know of his true puppet form, he knows knows of his third Kazekage puppet, and even then, and with his two Hokage summons he had before, he still never considered fighting Itachi. Even after fighting Hiruzen, he blatantly admits Itachi was always stronger than him, and wants to take Sasuke to reach his level. With his Amaterasu, that could easily one-shot any Jinchuriki, the Totsuka Blade, and Yadamir, Itachi really is pretty much invincible in the first half of Shippuden. Now, the reason I put Pain in A tier is for many lore reasons, which I'll go over. In terms of his raw feats, he is able to take down a Kakashi, who, if anything, is more powerful and trying even harder than he did against Kakazu. Even after spamming his Mangekyo, he thought he would near-death Kakazu with. He is absolutely flatlined and can't even put a scratch on Tendo Pain, even with Choji and Choza both helping him out. Pain also is able to tag and damage full power Sharingan Kakashi faster than literally anybody in the entire series and stabs him in pretty much 10 seconds of their fight. Imagine if Pain had Sasori's poison, he would have just killed Kakashi like he was a background fodder character. Or how Sasori treated Konkuro at the start of Shippuden is a good example as well. Tendo then becomes extremely fatigued after he spurgs out and uses all of his energy to annihilate the Leaf Village with a Shinra Tensei, and then has to face Sage, Naruto, and, and all of Mount Miyagoku. Naruto at this moment is an absolute monster, even in base, Kakashi thinks that Naruto is already strong enough to fight alongside him, and even after seeing Kakazu fight, he thought he could destroy him. He didn't just see Kakazu and go, wow, that got... <sighs> no, no. He didn't just see Kakazu and go, wow, that guy could blitz me by over 72 times my current speed. He looked at Kakazu and thought it was doable. Now, Naruto is stronger than ever before with all of Mount Miyaboku helping him. Pain just literally fought the entire Leaf Village by himself, then wasted all of his power blowing it up. Then Naruto learns all of Pain's secrets like he has a video game guide of a boss ready on hand, and guess what? He still loses. Bruh. Pain is also entrusted with facing down the Leaf Village after Kakazu is annihilated and the Akatsuki watched it happen. With the actual Shonen Jump release of Pain's introduction, then literally immediately saying Pain is the strongest man in the Akatsuki and he is hunting for Naruto. With his Chubaku Tensei, he's able to hold down eight tails of the nine tails if he put all of his force into it, which means it would have required the full nine tails to bust out of his full power sealing jutsu. A huge leap in strength from characters like Orochimaru and the Sanin getting mopped by simply four tails of it. Even after being defeated, Zetsu thinks that Pain ever being defeated is completely inconceivable and that he has no idea how Obito ever thought it was even possible. Even though Zetsu literally watches and records all battles, he didn't think it was ever possible even after witnessing the rest of the Akatsuki get pretty much defeated. 
Many argue that Pain is simply not at full power during the Konoha invasion, which is true. He's actually degrading ever since he fights Jiraiya in the Rain Village, and isn't even close enough to Nagato to use his full power on top of being fatigued, which could explain this loss. As well as nobody expecting Naruto to become so strong, as Obito and Zetsu both imply in Tell Sasuke. It's very clear that Pain is in A tier, and is intended to be a next level opponent in the Akatsuki by Kishimoto himself alongside Itachi. Finally, we have Obito Uchiha. Obito, even with just his orange mask, is able to react to the Raikage and is able to blitz through Anoki's particle style to the point he can't even see him move. Obito also thinks he would mop Danzo who fought MS Sasuke and is generally unfazed when Kabuto pulls out a swarm of Edo Tensei Akatsuki members and only decides to work with him when he sees the real Madara be pulled out. Obito has Genjutsu that contain even perfect Jinchuriki and the complete nine tails with almost no effort and can simultaneously fight the fourth Hokage and scare him at the same time. To put this in perspective, Obiso pretty much took on the third and fourth Hokage and the entire Leaf Village pretty much at the same time and arguably almost stalemated them when he was a lot younger and arguably weaker. This is of course no prep time Obito, but even without the Ninetales, Minato warns that Naruto will have to become a ton stronger to ever fight him, Minato literally watching the battle with Pain unfold right before even saying this, and says he thinks you'd have to have a complete control of the Ninetales to ever confidently fight him. He's also able to block Suigetsu's Executioner Blade with one arm, whereas it took Killer B2, and never even uses his Mengekyo Sharingan for almost any feats in the series as stated in the databook, or never shows them in combat. He is without a doubt a higher caliber than the rest of the Akatsuki and B and lower, and isn't pressed by anybody in the series until Madara appears. Now, how does the ranking in A tier go? That depends. On one hand, you could argue Pain is stated to be the strongest and Zetsu thinks it's impossible you'd ever lose, but on the other, you can know how Minato thinks Obito would require even more strength to face and Itachi could potentially Batman Obito at his peak. So maybe you can make an argument that Pain is the strongest in the Akatsuki in terms of raw power, examples being Shibaku Tensei and the Renegon's raw power increase, with Obito and Itachi being faster being a possibility, but I'll let you guys decide how do you think the ranking in A tier goes? I know some people think Obito is a completely higher tier, like he'd be like S tier, but unfortunately it's still, there's still too many factors that kind of make it too debatable for me to say that confidently. I want to keep the tiers as these are debatable subjects rather than this is actually how it should go. Now in S tier, we have Zetsu, number one. Now Zetsu is weird, so hear me out, but he can either be utter garbage or pretty peak, so he can either be number one or possibly in C tier. And the reason Zetsu is weird is because his power can depend on who he's attached to. So for instance, when he's attached to Obito, he can fight off EMS Sasuke. When Guru Zetsu is attached to Yamato, he can fight off the entire Shinobi Alliance at the same time so it makes you wonder just how truly strong zetsu would be or could be when attached to certain characters oh and he also stabbed ten tails madara which is a better feat than any akatsuki member gg but now anyway that one is kind of a joke but it really depends on those factors as i said so maybe you guys can rank zetsu yourselves but that's my list i hope you all enjoyed if you did maybe consider leaving a like and subscribing and other than that till next time